In this video I want to talk about the biology of palm tree growth. Palm trees are a type of perennial flowering plant that has approximately 2,600 species belonging to the family Asclepiadaceae. Palms are organized into six subfamilies. Palms are monocots. Monocots are defined by having seeds that contain a single mono embryonic leaf known as a cotyledon. The majority of our agricultural plants and many important crop are monocots. These are rice, wheat, corn, sugarcane, bamboo, onion, banana and garlic. And of course coconuts, dates and other palm fruits as the pindo palm fruit, saw palmetto palm fruit, peach palm fruit, oil palm fruit and betel nut palm fruit. Monocot plants have one cotyledon. They also have long narrow leaves with parallel veins. Cutting a cross section from the stem of a monocot shows the vascular bundles scattered around in the plant tissue. Another key characteristic for identifying monocots is by the number of flowers or flower parts which are arranged in groups of three. The leaves of daiko plants come in a variety of shapes and sizes and the veins form branching patterns. The image above shows a cross section of the stem of a dicot plant and monocot. Note how the vascular bundles are scattered in the monocot stem and arranged in a circular pattern in the dicot stem. Also, monocots have fibrous roots and dicots have a tap root. The life cycle of a palm tree is an amazing thing. From the time the seed is planted to the time the tree reaches its full height, there are many steps involved. Let's take a look at the different stages of a palm tree's life cycle. Seed germination. The first stage in a palm tree's life cycle is seed germination. This is when the seed starts to grow and develop into a young plant. For most palm trees, this process takes place within two to four weeks after the seed is planted. Vegetative growth. Once the young plant has emerged from the seed, it will begin to grow and develop leaves, known as fronds. This phase of growth can last anywhere from six months to two years, depending on the species of palm tree. During this time, the tree will also begin to develop its trunk and root system. Reproductive phase. Once the palm tree has reached maturity, it will enter into its reproductive phase. During this time, the tree will produce flowers, which will eventually turn into fruits such as coconuts. Depending on the species of palm tree, this reproductive phase can last anywhere from one three years. Fruiting phase. The final stage in a palm tree's life cycle is known as fruiting. This is when the fruits that were produced during reproduction mature and are ready to be eaten or used for other purposes, such as making oil or cosmetics. Once all of the fruit has been harvested from a palm tree life cycle, it will eventually die. Palm stems, trunks, vary considerably in dimensions and appearance among species, but in general they are cylindrical to slightly tapered and occasionally bulging in shape. The surface may be smooth to extremely rough and knobby and may be armed with sharp spines. Some species display prominent and often attractive leaf scars on their stems which were points where leaves were attached to the stem. The spacing between these leaf scars into nodes is a function of the rate of stem growth. Younger palms produce the longest internodes, which decrease sharply in length as the palm matures. Palm stems are characterized by having a single apical meristem or growing point, which is also referred to as the bud or heart. All new leaves and flowers develop from the apical meristem. A dicot tree produces phloem and zelem internally with a cambium, a growth ring. This is called secondary growth. 
the palm stems do not increase in girth due to any cambial activity but this thickening is the result of gradual increase in size of cells and of intercellular spaces. This is a kind of long continuing primary growth. Palms have no lateral meristems or vascular cambium. Death of the apical meristem in a palm results in the death of that stem and death of the entire palm. Plant make their food through photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process in which green plants use sunlight. Without photosynthesis, there would be no green plants. And without green plants, there would be no animals or humans. Photosynthesis requires sunlight, chlorophyll, water and carbon dioxide gas. Chlorophyll is a substance in all green plants, especially in the leaves. Plants take in water from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air. Photosynthesis starts when chlorophyll absorbs energy from sunlight. Green plants use this light energy to change water and carbon dioxide into oxygen and nutrients called sugars. The plants use some of the sugars and store the rest. The oxygen is released into the air. Plants need a lot of transport for this process. There are veins in the plant named xylem, transport water and minerals to the whole plant. The sugar is transported in veins named phloem. How is water transported so high as a tree? Because of pump cells in the root, the capillary action of the veins and the suction of the evaporation of water from the stomata of the leaves. In this way, the water can be transported over 100 meters high. Palm roots differ greatly from those of broadleaf and coniferous trees in that they are all adventitious emerging from a region of the trunk called the root initiation zone. Palm roots originate from the outer region of the central cylinder, where they connect with vascular bundles in the stem. As they grow, the sheer volume of new roots may force the cortex and pseudobark to split and flare out from the base of the stem. Palm roots emerge at their maximum diameter and no additional increase in diameter will occur. Some primary roots may grow downward, but the majority grow laterally, extending out 15 meters or more from the trunk in large specimens. Palm roots do not have root hairs like Dicot roots. Coconut palm trees have a surprisingly small root ball. For this reason, the tree can easily blow over. Palm leaves are generally one of three types, pinate, palmate, or costa palmate. Pinate leaves, which are sometimes described as being feather-like, have leaflets entirely separated from each other that are attached perpendicularly to the rachis. The rachis is an extension of the petiole, which extends into the leaf blade. Example of a pinnate leaf palms a coconut queen and date palms. Palmate leaves, which can be referred to as fan palms, have adjacent leaflets or leaf segments that are joined laterally for some or most of their length. They originate from a single point at the tip of the petiole, which often includes a specialized protuberance called the hastula. Mexican fan palm, windmill palm and sugar palms are typical palmate leaf palms. Costa palmate leaves are intermediate between pinate and palmate leaves, with the overall leaf blade being round to oval in shape. Leaflets are joined together for some or most of their length, but are attached along a costa, which is an extension of the petiole into the leaf blade. Sabal species have costa palmate leaves, palm trees, produce flowers that are typically small and yellow or white in color. The flowers are usually clustered together in a spiky inflorescence, the flowering part of the palm tree. These flowers are pollinated by insects and birds, and once pollinated, they will develop into fruits. 
The primary stalk of the inflorescence is known as the peduncle, with the first and second order branches called the rachis and rachilla, respectively. Both male and female flowers occur on monoecious palms, while dioecious palms possess only male flowers or female flowers. Palm fruits are botanically classified as drupes and have one or more stony seeds covered with a fleshy, mealy or fibrous mesocarp and a thin superficial epicarp. The mesocarp of some species, for example Caryota, Arenga, Roystonia, Chamadoria, etc. contains needle-shaped calcium oxalate crystals that are extremely irritating to exposed skin. The stony outer layer of the seed is known as the endocarp which encloses the food storage tissue, endosperm, and the embryo. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe my channel. It helps me very much. If you have any comments, please write them below the video. I really appreciate it.